is Nolan Reinisch. He has served as a teacher for 20 years. He's always felt a calling to inspire and motivate the lives of children. During his career, Nolan received a certification in mindfulness and education, helping to create and implement a mindfulness meditation program for students in his school and a meditation for self-care program for teachers in the district. Nolan believes that reforming education and emphasizing meditation and social emotional skills such as compassion, empathy, self-love and kindness in schools will change the inner world of children, which will ultimately change the outer world that we live in as a result. It's beautiful. In 2016, he experienced what he calls his spiritual awakening. And since then, he's been an avid student of metaphysics through quantum physics, spiritual books, various modalities on meditation. And he's currently a student of the Self-Realization Fellowship of Paraman, I hope I say this right, Paramanahansa Yogananda, Yogananda. He'll, he'll correct me once he gets on there, practicing the scientific meditation practices of Kriya Yoga. Nolan's deepest calling is to impact and improve the future of our planet by raising the collective consciousness of humanity through heart-based consciousness. And that's what he's going to talk to you about today. He is currently a Math Heart certified mentor. His focus is on building personal resilience, reducing stress, and enhancing the overall well-being of the people he works with. He specializes in scientifically backed heart math techniques and biofeedback technology, which teaches others how to create and sustain interstates of heart-brain coherence, allowing them to regulate their own nervous systems, conquer stress and anxiety, and live with more ease and emotional resilience. So Nolan, I am now going to turn this over to you, and we look forward you to your sure. share. <laughs> How's everybody feel? We feel good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, guys. I get so I'm just gonna jump in, Trish. I just start my speak. Okay, let's go. Let's just go. I love this. All right. So um I always name name my talks. This one is called Ascension into Heart-Based Consciousness. Okay. So we are living in the most exciting time in human history right now, whether you know that or not. You are one of the lucky souls who got to incarnate on earth as a human during this time. And what is happening is a great awakening of the human race, an evolution of consciousness, an unprecedented ascension of humanity. So what I wanted to explain to you was exactly from what I've learned and from what I've personally experienced, what is happening. So if this is true, wouldn't you want to know how humanity is evolving? Wouldn't you want to know exactly what ascension is? And most importantly, wouldn't you want to know how you can assist yourself and others on this process of evolution and ascension, right? Well, there are many people and many sources that talk about this, of course. Uh, but a lot of the information um, that I think the best information on this topic, um, where a lot of this information comes from, is from a channeling that occurred in the 1980s. And it's, it's called the Law of One. Um, there was a channeling of a collective consciousness, a, co a collective being that calls themselves Ra. You may have heard of Ra going back to ancient Egypt uh, mythology and stuff, but uh, Ra um, was channeled over the course, I think, of a couple years, and then that was recorded and written down into a book called The Law of One, and I think it's an amazing uh, information, and it, it explains in wonderful detail the evolution and ascension of humanity, which is happening now, okay? So, Ra talks about humanity as we exist today exists as what's called third density beings okay now first i want to i want to acknowledge and talk about the fact that a lot of times when we're talking about ascension a lot of times people are will be talking about 
earth ascending into fifth dimension or fourth dimension. And I'm not talking about dimensions. Dimensions are a reality. So this is the 3D reality, the third dimension reality, the physical reality. There's another dimension that you go to, of course, when you go to sleep, right? There's another dimension that exists that we might call heaven, right? These are realities for our consciousness. So yes, that is a thing. Yes, that exists. Yes, that's exciting information. But I wanted to talk about specifically you, how you as a human being on earth right now are changing, evolving, and ascending. Now, you, we are what's called third density beings. Density actually has to do with the word dense, and that is the fact that all of the molecules in your body, all of your cells hold light, right? Everything is energy. You are energy, and you have light in your body. You are literally a light being, but just very, very, very densified into physical form, right? Now, as we become higher density, as your body changes and you evolve into higher densities, your body literally holds more light. You become more light and you become less dense. So a third density being um, is, well, I'll talk about that in a second. So what we're ascending to is from a third density being into fourth density beings. Okay, so we're we're talking exactly about what is third density, what is 4D. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, if that's okay, to show you what that is. Okay, third density beings has to do with the first three. A lot of times they're called what's called chakras, right? The first density is the root. I like to call them energy centers. I don't really like the word chakra because I don't like a lot of people have their own little... Mm, uh, idea of what that is and whether that's real or not. But this is actual science, guys, because we actually have an energy body and these are starting to become testable in science. So we do have an energy body. We do have an energy system. So although we do have seven energy centers, as human beings, we mainly have the focus and the perception of our consciousness for our first three chakras, our first three energy centers, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus, okay? Now, all of these create the illusion of self, the lower self, the separate self, the self that you know you to be. I'm walking around as Nolan, the former teacher with this personality who grew up here, who has these beliefs, right? My ability to have this experience as a separate self comes from the ego, right? The ego, the creation of the separate self. So as a third density being, I have my perception and my consciousness based through these first three energy centers, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus. Now, of course, I can still experience the other, um, the other energy centers. They still are a part of my awareness at times, but my awareness is mainly rooted in these three as a third density being. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit in a second. But of course, as we evolve, our ascension is upwards from the root to the sacral to the solar plexus. And of course, as a fourth density being, now my awareness, now my consciousness is based in the heart energy center, which of course, my whole existence is different. My perception of the world, my beliefs, the way I exist in the world as a being radically shifts as I become a heart-based consciousness being, a 4D being, okay? Now, as we exist now as a third density being in our three lower energy centers, these are our three beliefs of the ego, which is lack, attachment, and control. So I'll give you a quick summary of each one. Um, with the root energy center, this is the energy, of course, of lack, right? This is in our belief of lack, meaning that it is a belief that we are not whole. There is something that we are missing. There is something that we are missing. We're always needing something. So if I'm, this is very much based in survival as well. And so the self-perception from lack is I am incomplete, I am incomplete, right? So if I am incomplete, then there is always something that I need in order to feel like I'm whole. And a lot of times for people like humans, that's I need love from somebody else, right? I need this relationship. I need this job. 
I need, I need something outside of myself to be whole, to feel whole. So this idea and belief that we are lacking is a belief that comes from this first energy center. Okay. Um, also, each corresponding energy center corresponds with a major one of our lower emotions. So the emotion that corresponds with the root is sadness. Okay. Any form of sadness that you feel, you know, that you feel in life is being activated from this energy center. And that makes sense, right? Because if I don't feel like I'm whole, if I always feel like a part of me is missing, then there's going to be a degree of sadness that comes with that, right? All right. So the sacral energy center, um, this is the energy of attachment. Okay. And the belief of this energy center, the belief of ego here is my happiness depends on outcomes. My happiness depends on outcomes. That means this is, this leads to what's called attachments and desires. So all of our desires in life, is because I need, in order to be happy, I need an outcome. I'll be happy when I have this relationship. I'll be happy when I'm married. I'll be happy when I finally have money. I'll be happy when I have this car. I'll be happy when I have this, this life. I'll be happy when, right? So all of our desires, all of the things that, and outcomes that we need to be okay and to feel whole and to not feel lack, this constantly keeps us on that hamster wheel of I'll be happy when, right? Our attachment to outcomes and our personal desires. Now, the main emotion that comes from this energy center is anger, right? So uh, anger at anything that is keeping me from achieving my desires and my attachments, the things that don't go my way. Anger is the main or any anger or any um, any emotion that is a derivative of anger will come from the sacral. OK, now our energy center also goes up to the solar plexus and the solar plexus is the energy of control. The belief of the ego from the solar plexus is I am in control. OK, now this is the self. This is the self perception of personal doership personal doership as in i am a separate being in this life life happens by me i am the one that needs to achieve these outcomes i am the one making life happen i am the one that despite life me is going to make this happen is going to get this job is is going to reach this outcome is going to achieve these great things the personal doership and of course we all experience this because we experience ourselves as existing in the world making things happen now of course great spiritual masters who have ascended past this realize that we are not that we are not like life is not happening by us life is happening through us it's like a wave believing that it's making itself travel across the ocean it's like a wave believing that it's a separate part of the ocean and that it, it needs to achieve something accomplish something the wave itself needs to get across the ocean not realizing that the late the wave is the ocean and the wave is traveling as the ocean of the ocean because of the ocean as part of the ocean and the same thing is contr is true with us life is happening through us us and we are we are just experiencing life as it happens as a as opposed to the personal doership um the emotion of the solar plexus this emotion of control and especially feeling like we don't have control because of course we don't really have control the emotion that goes with that is fear right fear so we've got sadness we've got anger we've got fear and the three beliefs of the ego which is lack attachment and control all of these selves create the illusion of the lower self the separate self the the individual self the illusion of ego correct Okay. Now, what's so what's prevalent about this is to realize that of course I can have moments 
where I feel love. I know I have those moments where I feel love. I feel loving. I feel loved. And I have, I can have a lot of uh, what I can call mystical experiences as well that can bring me up into these energy centers as well. But if we ask ourselves the question, well, why don't I stay there? Sometimes I feel deep, deep, deep love for the people in my life, love for my life in general, but then that goes. I don't stay like that forever. Why? Why can't I stay in that state of love? Why can't I stay at, at, in this great state of spiritual ecstasy that I get in these mystical experiences sometimes? Why can't I stay there? And that's because since we are mainly rooted in these three energy centers, it's like a magnet right? Our energy is always being pulled back down into here. Now, although at times we can ascend up into these energy centers, eventually our ego, because our ego mind, our mind rests in our ego. So our thoughts are based on lack, att attachment, and control. These will kick in. And since we have 50 to 70,000 thoughts a day, and most of them are the same as yesterday and they're negative and they're based in ego. They're constantly like a magnet pulling us back down into these energy centers so I can continue to experience myself as this separate being within my ego in the energy of lack, attachment, and control. Okay? So, obviously, as you know by now and what you've inferred is that now what is happening is humanity as we ascend – is um, our energy is being pulled up into our heart. And this is going to be called heart-based consciousness. Now, of course, the heart's self-perception is I am love. And the belief from the heart is love is all I seek to be. Love is all I seek to be, right? Once we move up into the heart, our life changes, our perception changes. And it's no longer about the personal doership. And your life stops being about doing, needing to accomplish, needing to achieve, needing to overcome. And it starts being about being. So you shift from doing to being into your I amness, or what I like to call loving awareness. So from the heart's consciousness, you are loving awareness, seeing things through the perception of the heart. Now, of course, as your perception changes into the heart-based consciousness, Ra says that what changes is the veil of forgetfulness. As a third density being, we come into these bodies, we come into this life, this incarnation with what's called the veil of forgetfulness. And think about it, it's complete spiritual amnesia, right? We, we come here, we don't know where we came from, we don't know where we're going, we, complete, we completely forget who we are, what we are. We completely forget our connection to divinity, right? And our, and our connection to our higher self. But from this heart-based consciousness, that veil of forgetfulness begins to fade, right? And you start being in the world from the heart, transcending the beliefs of the ego, where belief, before we had a belief in lack, but we, instead of experiencing lack from the heart, we experience wholeness, okay? Where before we experienced attachment to outcomes, now we experience non-attachment, okay? And before we experience control and the need to control, now we experience surrender, surrender. And that life happens through me. Not that life happens to me or life happens by me, but life happens through me. We start to experience the reality of I am already a perfect being in heaven, here and now. Okay? And the beauty is that once your heart's energy is activated, this magnet starts to fade. The pull of this magnet starts to go. And now your consciousness begins to rest in this heart space. It's like the analogy of a beach ball. Have you ever had a beach ball in a swimming pool or out in the water? What happens when you pull the beach ball under the water? 
the more you pull that beach ball under the water, the more that beach ball pulls up, right? It tries to pull itself back up to the surface, back to the top. So the more it both pulls down, so yes, I will still experience anger, sadness, fear. Yes, I will go down here into these lower states. Yes, I'll still have an ego. But like the beach ball, the more it pulls down, the more the heart naturally wants to pull it back up. Okay? And also the beauty of from this heart space, there is five times the amount of energy available to the being. So we become much more energetically powerful from this heart chakra, but also because it requires so much energy, it's harder for that energy to stay up here. And that, that is another reason for this ascension. We are being given the energy to pull our consciousness up into the heart center. Okay. So the question that you would have now, now we understand that we're literally ascending we're evolving into heart-based consciousness and to beings of love that have consciousness through love. The question now becomes how, right? How? How do I do this? Oops, so I stopped sharing there now, right? Good. So number one, I want to teach you how this can work. Now, number one, of course, is spiritual practices, all right? We all are very familiar with that, spiritual practices that actively allow you to tap into your consciousness and move the energy from your lower energy centers up your spine, up into your heart, up into your higher energy centers in your head. And of course, there are practices like Kriya Yoga. There's anything like Kundalini, Kundalini practices, which have been hap uh, practiced for thousands of years in the Eastern traditions. Um, and then of course, my favorite, which is heart coherence meditations. And that's what we did earlier, right? Literally by fate, by focusing your attention in your heart space, you are harmonizing your brain and your heart and bringing your attention and your consciousness into your heart space, right? So the more that we can do that, the more we arrest our attention in our hearts through that consciousness, we are activating our heart's energy center. And we're like that beach ball analogy, we're training our system, moving our system from our head, literally from our head-based consciousness or our mind ego-based consciousness into our heart, okay? And the beauty of that is that once you do that, only the heart knows true reality. So the heart is a filter through which we experience reality. Our consciousness experiences the world in the real way, not through the beliefs of the ego, but through love, through our I amness, through our attached, uh, through our connection to God. So we literally have a new basis and understanding of the true reality of, of God and of love. Okay. So we've got spiritual practices of which everybody, there's a million of them. And I, I, I could care less which spiritual practice you do. I think there's a lot of great ones that work. But the second way into heart-based consciousness, which is the most important way, is life, right? Your everyday life. Because life is the real sadhana. Life is the ashram. Life is your true spiritual practice, right? The way you live your life every day. Because the truth is, when we do our spiritual practices, maybe for 20, 30 minutes, even an hour, we've got the whole rest of the day out in the world the whole rest of the day back in our ego. So how do we make our life the ashram? How do we make our life a spiritual practice, right? So one important thing then to know is that the path to fourth density, the path to fourth density consciousness in your life is through devotion to God. Devotion to God, okay? First, understand the word devotion. Devotion isn't worship like, oh, God, you are the mighty and the best, right? I think uh, worship is a whole separate thing. Worship is ego-based. Devotion means to give your life to. To be devoted something means to give your life to. And so if my path is devotion to God, again, I, I also don't like to use the word God too much because of the connotations with that. We can replace that with the word love. 
devotion to love. And that is literally just connecting to the heart, connecting to love, being devoted to living to through the heart, being devoted to love, to being loving. And that is devotion to God because God is love and love is God. They are one in the same energy. So the only spiritual practice you truly need is devotion to God, devotion to love, connecting to your heart, connecting to love. Okay. One way you can do that is just like the beginning of the meditation we did. I literally call it the shift, literally shifting. And I call this neck down, neck down consciousness. So I want you to do that right now. I want you to just picture from your neck with your awareness and come down into your heart, into your chest. Now, you can do this right now as I'm speaking and as you're listening to me. You can listen to me. You can see me. We can interact. Everything that I can that I say can be experienced through the heart as your attention is split, not just on me, but also your heart at the same time. Now, notice after a while, what, what will happen as you forget is your awareness will come back up to your head and in your mind. And you'll be back in your ego consciousness. And that's why you have to be like, I'm back in my head. Come back down into your heart. Go below the neck. And I like to do this. And I set reminders on my phone. I set reminders on my, on my um, watch that go off every hour, reminding me to shift. And I just remember to shift back down into my heart. Because the more time I spend in my heart, the more I'm actually activating that heart-based consciousness. I'm, I'm leaving the ego-based mind, head consciousness, and I'm literally going back into the heart, okay? So I want you, as I finish this up, to continue to make an effort to stay in the heart. Remember to shift, and I'm going to keep reminding you to just listen to what I'm saying, and not just listen with your ears, but to feel it and filter it through your heart, okay? So... The ability to ascend up to the heart and maintain that heart-based consciousness where you want to be able to stay there for as long as possible is associated with repeated choices that align with this, ener this higher energetic state. I'll say that again. The ability to sustain this state of heart-based consciousness is associated with repeated choices that align with this energetic state. So that's why and how life is the real sadhana, the real ashram, the real spiritual practice. Because life will constantly bring you down into these feelings of lack, attachment, and control. You will constantly begin to feel the sadness, the grief, the anger, right? The, the ego will start to fight back, especially when you start making this shift. And when the ego starts feeling like it's lo losing control and starts dissoluting, the ego starts to fight back. It starts bringing up all the, can I just say shit? Because it is, right? Um, and this is when these things come up, you have to make choices that are in alignment with love, that are in alignment with your devotion to God, not the choices based out of those feelings, out of the ego, okay? And that's why one really, really important spiritual practice in your everyday life, when those feelings start to arise and the ego flares up and you start having those ruminating negative thoughts and you fall into victim consciousness and you get angry and frustrated and irritated and sad, the, the, the very important thing to do is to surrender. Surrender. Remember that you are not those feelings. You are not the ego. You are not those thoughts. You are the awareness. I am the awareness of those things. I am the awareness of this anger. I am the awareness of this feeling. I am the awareness of these judgment thoughts. I am the awareness of this critical mind of mine. I am. And your I amness is your being. I am that I am. Your I am is an infinite ocean of love. And the more you do that, the more you shift. So do that now. Shift back into your heart space. 
as you shift into this heart space and let your mind rest in the heart over time, the more you do this day after day after day, now the mind starts to say, okay, this isn't so bad. I, I, I can, I can be here. This is, I, I can ex still experience, I can still have these thoughts, but I can do it from the heart. This isn't so bad. This actually feels nice, right? And now the mind doesn't want to go back to the head. The mind wants to stay in the heart, but this takes a long time. This takes a lot of shifting, and this takes a lot of those repeated choices to stay in the heart and to act in devotion to your heart and to love. Okay. Does that make sense? So I want to end with a couple of scriptures and the beauty of everything that I've said to you, which has been talked about and the beauty of this church and why I love this church so much. Like Trish says, is there is no dogma that we just show up and we experience love in its purest form and whatever form that we believe and we can experience. And that countless religions are all basically saying the same thing. So I want to give you some different sayings by Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, and Lao Tzu, right? And, and, and the Tao. So uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that those who seek to find the one without ceasing will find the Lord dwelling in their own hearts. Okay, Jesus in the Gospel of Luke says, the kingdom is not coming in any way you can observe with your eyes. The kingdom of God is already here within you. Okay, that's why he says the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. It's in your hearts as love. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita again says, those who find the way are those who have love and forgiveness in their hearts. Judas asked Jesus, how do we find the way? And Jesus answered, by developing love and compassion. The Buddha says, the way is not in the sky. The way is in the heart. And then... What I believe is the most important quote by Jesus in John, he says, I give you a new commandment to love one another just as I have loved you. Uh, love is the path. Love is the awakening of heart-based consciousness. Okay. And then the last one, this is my favorite quote, and it comes from a book called Conversations with God, in which God is discussing what to do in any difficult situation. And God says, at the critical juncture in all human relationships, there is only one question. What would love do now? What would love do now? And I love that. I love that. And I have tried to live by that for the past years, and I have failed many times. <laughs> um but over the years, it's getting, it's getting easier, and I make more and more choices that are more in alignment with the answer to what would love do now. And so I invite you, as you continue to ascend into heart-based consciousness, as you continue to ascend, not just for yourself, but for all of the humanity, keep asking yourself that question every day. Shift into your heart space, and in every difficult situation ask yourself what would love do now and that will steer you in the right path that will steer you in the path to heart-based consciousness so i love you guys thank you for allowing me to share that